Welcome to the 18th class meeting of EC341, Introduction to Communication Systems. Today, I'm going to talk about a voluntary project first. And some of you have shown interest after you probably performed poorly in the <laughs> exam. The voluntary project, as the name says, is a voluntary project, which means that uh, if you choose not to do this project, there will be no penalty at all. Then you may say that, how can a voluntary project then benefit uh, those who do this project? And I will explain it to you. First, the topics must be uh, chosen, uh, approved uh, by me uh, via email. So uh, you may come to me after the class meeting and talk about what about this, 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 uh, such and such topic. And I might say that, okay, that sounds good. Please send me an email. And then if you receive my confirmation email, okay, go. Then uh, your topic is now approved, okay? And second, the topic, when you choose the topic, topic must be related to this course. You may not say that, okay, I will talk about some semiconductor device. If, if <laughs> it is related to, for example, chip-to-chip -chip communication, for example, it's okay. However, if you want to talk about some quantum well and something like that, it's, it's not a good topic. I will never approve that. So when you choose topics, be careful. But uh, it's, your, your topic may be very, very uh, flexibly wide. And what would be the deliverable? The deliverable is around two or three. Two is necessary and uh, three is recommended. If you decide to choose some programming or coding project, then you have additional file, uh, the source code uh, to be submitted to me. Uh, if it is not, then you need to submit first one PDF or PowerPoint file for your presentation. And second one is that you have to record your presentation. You don't need to put a camcorder. You may use as I do, you may use Zoom or some OBS or some other uh, recording formats, even uh, you may just use the voice recording uh, option of PowerPoint. But what is important is that you need to send me an MP4 preferred type uh, video file. Okay, so that uh, I can confirm that you not only have written your own presentation file, but also at least you memorized many of them to fluently present the content, got it? So sometimes your voluntary project may be related to, okay, uh, some history of analog communications or uh, some history of information theory, history of uh, TV broadcasting system, history of uh, satellite communication system, and future of cellular communication system, any, any related topic, got it? However, this is very important. You cannot reuse what you have done or you are doing uh, in this semester for other courses. So you can't do, for example, write a PowerPoint file and present in A course and B course and this course, you can't do that, okay? If you, do that and later uh, it is discovered that you double used, triple used the deliverable, then I'm not tolerant, got it? And when's the due? Something's wrong, June 7th, I believe. Yeah, June 6th is holiday and 7th is Friday. Okay, Friday. And if you pass, something good happens. So before I grade your voluntary project, I'm going to give tentative grade to all of you. Not only to those uh, who decided to do voluntary project, but also those uh, 
decided not to do the voluntary project. So I will grade, uh, I will give you a temporary grade, tentative grade. So think about this. Suppose uh, three students got, uh, tentatively got A minus. And the third student has decided to do the voluntary project, but the other two doesn't. And this guy or lady submit a voluntary project that looks good. I, I believe that, okay, the student did a good job. Then uh, the student who submitted the project will be upgraded to A0 together with those two students, got it? So even if you decided not to do the voluntary project, no penalty because it is not the course requirement, got it? So uh, your strategy would be encourage your friends to do the voluntary project, not you. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so if you uh, have any question related to voluntary project, uh, tell me. Okay. Not right now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just a second. Is it? Yeah, so something's very, yeah, sorry about that. December. <laughs> I got confused. When's the when's the last day? So I will I will talk about this later. Yeah, because I copied this one, and some of my neurons believe that uh, we are uh, we are in the spring semester. Anyway, so I, I'm showing uh, my uh, yeah. Anyway, so uh, you will see the next spring semesters, probably I've seen that, uh, semesters course lists and uh, mathematics for EEA and uh, digital introduction to digital communications, introduction to signal processing, introduction to communications and network, all are related to this course. From the uh, last class meeting, I added two more messages from me, yeah, E and U, and some of you who did the uh, homework already have seen uh, how much I emphasize this one. E means existence, U means uniqueness. And uh, during the class meeting, I little bit mentioned about uh, the mathematician Pascal, and uh, you will see uh, two questions related to uh, Pascal's wager. Uh, this is from Wikipedia, and I uh, get some sentences from it and other uh, source resource, and you will enjoy it. Okay, okay uh, no corrections, clarifications, and as we did, we are now studying chapter four. Here goes the review. What is an angle modulation? So it's not angel. <laughs> when I was take, uh, teaching signals and systems, uh, this looks very similar to Shingar. And This looks very similar to this one. When you go to airport and see some duty-free shop, Chanel and Channel. And what else? Uh, sorry. If you visit some shopping mall, suddenly you see some uh, electrical engineering terminologies like Kozar. <laughs> and also, You see some uh, angle linus, not angle linus. Anyway, so what is angle modulation? Angle modulation is kind of an antonym of uh, amplitude modulation. However, this uh, classification is not precise. It's not widely accepted. Some people never talk about angle modulation. They only talk about phase modulation and frequency modulation because definition is somewhat vague. 
But anyway, the common, some common definition says that if you have a real valued band pass signal, that can be written in this form. Uh, let me be careful. Is it data or fee in the textbook? Always confusing. Just a second. It looks like fee. fee. Yeah. And the message or information signal only affects this V of T. Then the carrier is angle modulated. Why? First, the phase angle or phase or angle, it depends on, angle of the signal, real valued band test signal is what? This 2 pi FCT plus V of T. Some people say that this is instantaneous phase angle. Or instantaneous phase, instantaneous angle. Second, so this is given, right? Let's say that this is data. Now, here goes confusing definition. What? The center frequency or carrier frequency or the some other definition similar. So here, this entire quantity is a time varying function. And we choose some frequency, Fc. This is our choice. And you may call, or we may call it a center frequency, a carrier frequency, or some other name. Then, you may subtract this 2 pi FCT from theta of t and define P of t. And this phi of t is called what? Phase or phase angle deviation or phase deviation, angle deviation. So here I emphasize that Fc and phi of t pair is not unique. Ready? If you choose different Fc, you will have different phi of t given the same theta of t. It's, it's obvious, right? For example, you are given 5. You choose 1 plus 4 equals 5. You may choose 2 plus 3 equals 5, right? So in this way, Fc and phi of t is not unique mathematically. However, when we generate an angle modulated signal, we usually have what? In our mind, the carrier frequency or center frequency. So it is natural to choose that obvious carrier or center frequency as FC. However, let me emphasize, it is not unique in general, mathematically speaking. Now, here goes some confusing concept called instantaneous frequency. Now, let's focus on this representation of the instantaneous phase angle. Here, if we have, for example, phi of t constant, what happens? If we differentiate this instantaneous phase, with respect to time t and divide by what are uh, 2 pi, what happens? We get back our center frequency or carrier frequency or nominal carrier frequency. Now, what if 
phi is a time function. However, we still apply derivative. Then, some textbook uh, defines this way. So this instantaneous angle or phase differentiated and divided by 2 pi is called the instantaneous frequency of the uh, angle modulated signal. By the way, given theta of t, this derivative is kind of unique. So this is uniquely determined. Got it? Now, uh, last time I forgot to define this one. Oh, just a second. Frequency deviation. Yeah. Yeah. So you have chosen your carrier or center of nominal frequency. Then you subtract it from the instantaneous frequency. And this is called frequency deviation. Of course, deviation from your choice of FC. Got it? Or you may say frequency error if it is undesirable. Okay. Now, we have two very popular angle modulation schemes. One is called phase modulation, and the other is called frequency modulation. By the way, these two names are usually for analog modulation, where the message signal is in nature analog, and that is directly affects the modulated signal. If the message signal, even though it is analog, is once converted to digital or originally digital and uh, angle modulated. This is called uh, some uh, phase shift king, and this is called frequency shift king. And uh, I will talk about later very quickly when I cover digital communications part, of which details will be taught in digital communications course. That will be taught uh, Professor Chan Yosem next semester. In phase modulation, what do we do? We put our message in this. So let's, let's consider a transmitter. So we have uh, some local oscillator. And mathematically speaking, what we do is that we always do what? We always implement a transmitter by using two branch structure. One is so-called in-phase branch and the other is quadrature branch, right? If you want, or we may use some uh, polar coordinate transmitter. So let me just say this. So in the transmitter, you have some nominal frequency, right? And you have real value, the bandpass signal that is applied to be your power amplifier than antenna. Now, this signal the phase deviation equals some affine mapping of message, which means that it is in this form, then this is a, a phase modulated signal. And if the derivative of the phase angle is an affine mapping of M of T, so we may say that uh, 
in this form, then we may say it is a frequency modulated signal. By the way, here, if the derivative is an affine function of the message, then what happens? If we integrate this one, we have b hat t that serves after uh, divided by 2 pi uh, as a new frequency, right? So we will not talk about this. So let's say that it's a linear mapping of because we do not want to redefine our desired frequency. Got it? And this uh, B tilde is always exists due to, due to the uh, nature of the oscillator. So what happens? The message is conveyed by the frequency, instantaneous frequency of the uh, angle mod modulated signal in the uh, uh, frequency modulation. And last the topic we studied last time was narrow band angle modulation. And uh, narrow band angle modulation is related to the uh, Taylor series of e to the x, or if you want e to the jx, but anyway. So, When x is very small, e to the x can be well approximated by 1 plus x, as you, see, you, as you know, right? So in this visualization, around here, x is very small, then e to the x can be well approximated by 1 plus x, right? So this is the uh, motivation uh, in this narrow band angle modulations definition. So what you do is that even though our textbook use sines and cosines, I directly use the complex envelope of the signal and uh, apply the uh, first order approximation of e to the x. And what was interesting is here. So uh, this is uh, a, a continued uh, today's topic. Okay, let me go up. Where is the analysis? Yeah. yeah. So here, what is interesting is that uh, in narrow band angle modulation, if we rewrite it, the transmitted signal, uh, as the sum of the in-phase component and the quadrature phase component, we have what? We have constant times cosine and message times a sign. It's, it looks similar to the ordinary AM where we have only one component, but if we expand, we have something like a cosine to pi of ct minus a message times again cosine to pi of ct in the amplitude modulation. So using the phase analysis, we may draw the diagram in this way and we will see it again. That's the continued topic of today. Other topics of today is that we will define modulation index of an FM modulation. And also, we will study not only this narrow band FM, but also the wide band FM. Wide band FM is the FM modulation technique that is used for radio broadcasting. And narrow band FM, not used in radio broadcasting, but used uh, in some applications, uh, which you will see in the, uh, some of the problems in the homework. The problem is that I draw the uh, Venn diagram saying that this is the set of all modulation techniques. Half is linear, <laughs> and the other half is nonlinear. And angle modulation is a kind of not 
precise, but you may regard it a subset of uh, nonlinear modulation. What's the difficulty of nonlinear something? It's hard to analyze. So it's not easy to see what happens in nonlinear systems. But we engineers do something even if it's difficult. So here goes simplification. So we give up analyzing all the possible message signals, but focus on very special message signals. And more special is the case we are going to see here. Anyway, in this case, we will study the signal, the wideband FM signal in the time domain and also in the frequency domain. And as I told you, not only the narrow uh, the wideband signal, but also the narrowband signal is important. And interestingly, there are common modulation scheme to generate FM signal, wideband FM signal. One is so-called direct method and direct, the other is called indirect method. And in indirect method, what people do is that they first generate narrowband FM signal and convert it to wideband FM signal. So we are going to see that topic too. And I'm not sure I can cover this topic today. It's about the receiver. So let's see. So last time uh, we just started to study narrowband angle modulation. And here we specialize to see more. So now consider narrowband FM. Read for the simplification, message is a tone signal, a single tone. Here, single means that there is only one term. Sometimes people generalize and have something like this. Ready? So it's, it's like this, as I told you. We have our very complicated real world problem and we can't solve. We do not know how to start. So what do we do? We simplify. Still, we have no idea. We further simplify. Still no idea. So it's like, even though the original problem has a lot of important aspects that differentiates, that distinguishes the problem from other well-known problems. However, we can't handle all of them at the same time. So we give up, we give up, give up, and have very simple problem, which we can solve. Now, you solve, we solve, and we have experience from that problem solving. And we grow. Yeah? And then we put back some of the essence, we discard it and try to solve it. Interestingly, when you simplify, 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 one of the reasons why you solve this simplified version is that you couldn't solve this simplified version a little bit of all. But interestingly, you will find that after you solve this lower grade uh, problem, then suddenly you can solve this one based on your experience. And you can step up, step up, step up, step up, and eventually you can solve your original problem or you can solve very, not too much simplified problem to be published. <laughs> Sometimes you are very lucky. And now what do you do? You step up to further generalize your original problem and for the generalized generalization, sometimes you develop new theory. Whether it's, it's very small, but you, you may develop a new theory, new field of some electrical engineering. That's the research. So never forget uh, this lesson uh, you learn, you are learning from this course. The introduction to communication systems is important to me, but not all of you. Some of you will never study communications-related topic 
after you graduate, you will just always doing some fabs, right? Semiconductor etching, some photo lithograph. But keep this in mind, okay? Simplification and also when you simplify, try to sketch a lot of diagrams that really helps you. Putting them all in front of you actually makes copy of yourself assisting you. So it's like you, you multiply yourself. So five of you are solving, try to solving the same problem, putting their powers together. So believe me, okay, visualization really helps you eventually solve the simplified problem. Anyway, so here goes the idea. We want to analyze angle modulated signal. It seems it's too, too much complicated. But we know that uh, angle modulation has two famous modu sub modulations, phase and frequency. So let's focus on frequency modulation. In frequency modulation, We've seen, uh, we already know that this is a kind of nonlinear modulation. So what kind of message signal? General message M of T may not work. So what would be the simple? Anyway, we not only analyze it in the time domain, but also in the frequency domain. In the frequency domain, the simplest one is the direct delta type signal, which is cosine or sine sinusoidal, real valued sinusoidal signal. That's why we have chosen this. And after that, for example, we, we have solved, we have analyzed the uh, FM signal, especially narrow band, in this case, FM signal, with single tone, then we may generalize it to multi-tone and see what's the difference. Got it? That's the idea. Anyway, here goes some mathematical formula. So phi of t, its derivative is a linear function of the message signal. So it's, it is the integration of m of t. So here goes the m of t. The difference is that uh, we have some, let me see. Yeah, alpha here, because we are going to integrate it and want to have a function of t. So here, alpha is dummy integration variable we can freely choose and d alpha. And as you know that cosine after integration turns into sine with this scaling factor. Now, if this is very small, then what? Then we are diving into narrow band angle modulation area, right? As you see. So this is the assumption for this narrow band quantifier. Now, we put this one here, and we already know in narrow band angle modulation, we have in phase term with constant real baseband and quadrature like this. And we, we, we may want to put this back to the complex envelope times e to the j to pi f c t and real value, real part operator in order to see the effect of this message signal regardless of this carrier. Or we may divide our analysis into the complex baseband signal and then we may simply translate right by FC and left by negative FC. That's why we do this, got it? So here, some of you have forgotten this one, but it's from Euler's identity. And as you know, we have not only e to the j theta equals cosine theta plus j sine theta, cosine theta can be written as e to the j theta plus e to the negative j theta divided by two, and sine theta equals e to the j theta minus equals negative j theta divided by two j. Got it? So this sine becomes, uh, where it is? Yeah, 
2j, but as you know that the, uh, we have cosine minus sine, then what do we have? We have plus j in the complex envelope, right? Let me remind you, x of c, x of t equals xi of t cosine minus xq of t sine, then it becomes what? Real part of xi of t plus j xq of t e to the j2 pi fc t. Ready? That's why we have plus sign here. And now, what is this one? This one has direct delta function in the frequency domain at fm and direct delta function at negative fm. So this complex envelope has what? Of course, we have negative, so uh, we may say something like this. Got it? And it actually, it's natural because as we've already learned from our analysis, learned in the previous class meeting, that in narrowband FM, we have just a transmitted carrier in the in phase and what? the message times something. So it's like DSB suppressed carrier. And this term looks very similar. Low bandwidth expansion approximately. So this is natural. Now, here goes the uh, comparison with AM signal. And in AM signal, we have this one. See that? What is one? So here, this one becomes something like this. And again, here, this becomes the DC term. This becomes the right side delta function. This becomes left side delta function. The difference is that this one has delta function like this. And narrowband FM has delta function like this. Got it? So, if we just see in the spectrum analyzer, they will look almost the same. Now, let me ask you a question. So whenever you see this kind of derivation, you may say that, ah, professor will put it in the exam. I have to memorize is the and not interesting, but always try to change this value. So let's see what happens if you change this value. So it's like, your message is like do. Now, if you change FM greater than, then you have do type signal. What will happen? Of course, this frequency increases. So this is there, but these two delta functions moves away from the zero frequency. And also, actually, this carrier makes what? right shift and left shift entire signal. So you have actually, this is zero, and this is FC, and you have tone and two tones due to the message. And here you have a tone at negative FC and two other tones, got it? So that is the case. And what happens if you reduce it to zero? So this is constant. In that case, what will happen? you will see single tone. So it's very similar to AM, right? If we use, if we have high frequency term, our signal bandwidth increases. Low frequency term, our signal bandwidth decreases. Got it? So narrowband angle modulation, especially like this narrowband FM, is very easy to understand. Now let's use Last time I've shown this one very quickly, but let's see this one. So in phaser analysis, phaser, okay, be careful. In this, in this course, I will talk about phaser and phaser, right? And this is, uh, this is so-called EP in Korea. And this is what you learned in circuits, right? So 
in phase analysis, even in circuits course and disk course, the commonality is this one. You first start from real bandpass signal. And this bandpass signal may be just a simple tone, or it may have some uh, bandwidth. What is interesting is that real bandpass signal X of T can always be put in this form. So you may extract the effect of the nominal carrier, and you may just focus on this one. And here, this complex baseband signal was constant in your analog circuit theory, introductory analog circuit theory, because mostly uh, the analysis was for uh, the AC circuit, where you have uh, an oscillator and you have a, a resistor, capacitor, and inductor. In that case, no modulation, right? So all of your signals at any point of your circuit becomes real valued bandpass signal with the same frequency. The only difference is here this, in this constant. And this constant is what? Some number, real number times e to the j theta. So you may also write this one as real part and imaginary part. And that was phasor. So in your circuit theory course, you had some constant complex number. Now in this course, it's a signal. Of course, time varying, right? That's the difference. Now let's see. Let's see the AM first. So this complex envelope, or you may say just phasor, has what? Real number one, right? And what is this one? This one has what? This one has, so let's see. So just a second, uh, let me explain differently. So let's see in this way. So as a complex number, this has phase angle zero. So this direction, one, right? What about this one? This one is what? Some constant times FMT, right? Because two pi FMT. So this angle is two pi FMT. What about this one? This is a complex number that has, in this direction, 2 pi FMT, got it? So unlike your phasor in the circuit's course, you have a time varying, time varying component in this second term and third term. This is the real number, so in the complex plane, it's fixed, right? Now what about this? The Modulus of this complex number is fixed. However, this its phase angle is what? FMT. What, what is it? It rotates counterclockwise with frequency FM. So even though I have drawn like a constant, actually this rotates counterclockwise at frequency FM. What about the third term? Even though I have drawn like a constant complex number, actually it's rotating. Interestingly, these two terms rotates with exactly opposite direction, at, with exact opposite frequency and conjugate, complex conjugate nature. So actually, if you draw, uh, if you add these two up, what happens? You have only the real number. That is shown on the left side and in subplot A. So in AM, you have constant, and here you have a counterclockwise rotating complex number and clockwise rotating complex number. If you add these two second and third terms, you will add 
real number this direction or real number that direction. And of course, this is a phasor. So actually, if you have this term, what happens? The band pass signal, entire this thing rotates at the frequency Fc. But that's confusing. That's why we factor out the carrier effect and focus on phasor. Got it? So this is AM. And what about wideband FM? Uh, sorry, narrow band FM, especially uh, in this form. So here again, you have complex constant, but real actually, real number. And you have what? You have rotating phasor. You have rotating phasor. The problem is that this one and that one is not conjugate pair. So what's the relation? And the relation is like this. As you see here, or you may rewrite that one this way. So here goes the trick. Oh, it's going to So suppose this is e to the negative j 2 pi fmt. Now, what if you put negative sign, then you reflect this one with respect to the origin. So actually, this one is negative e to the negative j 2 pi fmt. Now let's compare with that one, so this term. And what if time t goes and this angle increases? Then that increases, so what happens? Actually, these two terms will move in that way, right? So we have, interestingly, this term, e to the j 2 pi fmt, and that term, they got, negative e to the negative j 2 pi fmt. And if you add up these two, what happens? The signal becomes always pure imaginary. So you have the second and third term, geometrically speaking, perpendicular to this constant. And in this case of AM, parallel to the constant. Got it? So that's the difference. So amplitude looks the same, phase angle becomes different. Got it? Here in the uh, note handout, you have to put a, a very big, <laughs> very big separator because from here we are not, we are not thinking about narrow band. FM or angle modulation. We consider general, or you may say wide band, wide band uh, FM. But as I told you, it's very difficult to analyze wide band FM with general message signal. So what do we do? Again, we consider very simple. Uh, just a second. Just a second. Where it is? Yeah. Just a second. Yeah. Very simple uh, single tone case. So here, uh, angle modulated signal with a sinusoidal message signal, which means that M of T equals, as we have done for narrow band FM, uh, A cosine to pi FM T. But you may still say that uh, we analyze narrow band PM because what? Sine and cosines, if you integrate, just flips and they have uh, pi over two difference, right? So actually with a single tone, with a single tone message, 
you may say that your analysis is for phase modulation, and also you may say that your analysis is for uh, FM. That's why uh, it just says spectrum of angle modulated signal with sinusoidal message. Got it? So here, we have cosine. And the reason is that if we differentiate, we get back the cos uh, sine here, because if we differentiate the instantaneous, sorry, if we find the instantaneous frequency, we have cosine, got it? Now, as I told you, this is no longer narrow band uh, angle modulated signal. And how can we analyze this simplified version? So in the narrow band angle modulation, we, how did, how did you do that? We took this term out of the sinusoidal signal. We converted it to a factor so that we could put the message only in the complex envelope. So, let, let me remind it to you. There it is. Yeah, like this. See that? We have our message related to phase deviation in the argument of the exponential function. However, using the Taylor series, we have taken it out and have factored out like this. Now we don't do that. Then any progress is possible. So here goes the first idea. This simple message of single tone is very interesting in some sense. So let's rewrite it this way, real part of e to the, uh, let me see, ac, ac, e to the, sorry, e to the j, let me see, yeah, beta sine 2 pi f m t, am I correct? Yeah, e to the j 2 pi f c t. Right? So you have you have two pi F C T plus beta sine two pi F M T, right? So this is the complex envelope of the uh, real bandpass signal. Now anything special here, not just e to the j v of t. Since this is a single tone, which is sine or cosine function, and as you learned in signal gen systems, you classify the signals into first some periodic signal and non-periodic signal. Because periodic signals has very interesting property. And what about this one? This is periodic, right? Sine function is periodic e to the j beta sine is also periodic. Am I right? And you know that any periodic signal, not, not any, most of the periodic signal, <laughs> yeah, under, under certain conditions like Dirichlet conditions, can be rewritten in the form of what? Fourier series, right? So actually, this can be rewritten as Sigma, uh, let me use I, and Fourier coefficient, I Fourier coefficient. And now we have to find out, uh, let me use K, okay? I looks confusing. And I prefer the K, so C sub K, and this form. Now we need to find out what? Of course, this t, the period of this signal in the time function, time domain, and the Fourier series coefficient. Then what? It's very easy to analyze this one because in the frequency domain, the signal, this complex envelope, will look like what? Weighted sum of delta functions.
with same spacing, right? So this is the idea. So actually, in the narrow band angle modulation, we ignored these directorial cut functions. Got it? Now we put them back. And let's find out the period first. So see this. This signal is periodic with period what? Period of this signal or that one? What is the period? And definition of periodic signal is like this. Some x of t is periodic with period t if x of t equals x of t plus capital T for all t. So now let's see. Here in this signal, let's guess. This signal, this part of the exponent has period what? 1 over f sub m. So let's consider t equals 0 and t equals 1 over f sub m. And let's see whether they are the same. And we have 2 pi in the argument of sine that is 0. So we have Not only this is true, you can immediately understand that, hey, just the period of this signal is 1 over fm, right? So this 1 over t is actually the frequency of the message. And also, you have just reminded that, hey, in the narrowband angle modulation analysis, this spacing was the same as the message frequency. <laughs> Actually, your guess was right. And you now understand that your guess, after you little bit generalize the problem, is assisted, assisted a lot about your experience in solving this simplified problem. Got it? So you will see some tone DC and First, harmonic, and second, harmonic, third, harmonics, and those stuff. Even though you have a single tone message. So in FM, interestingly, or a angle mod in angle modulation, even though you have a signal like do with a single frequency, actually you have, I cannot <laughs> make, but you have harmonics, right? So your bandwidth is actually expanded. Theoretically speaking, infinitely, right? Because in this case, you can easily show that you have, not easily, you can easily understand this is Fourier coefficients is non-zero for infinite terms in general. If beta is zero, you have single, but if beta is, becomes bigger and bigger, if beta becomes bigger and bigger, you have more and more stronger delta functions. If beta is very small, then you may ignore these things. And you know from your experience of the analysis of narrow band angle modulation, you, you know that, got it? So this beta kind of scaling constant here determines or affects harmonic components. Got it? And here goes the definition. Beta is called the modulation index of, of course, angle modulation. But you will mostly see uh, of uh, frequency modulation. 
Okay. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Got it? Now, <laughs> we need to compute the uh, Fourier series coefficient. And most of the textbooks talking about wideband FM or wideband angle modulation spends a lot of pages to derive the result. And they show off, hey, textbook readers, I am the author and I'm very knowledgeable about complicated functions such as Bessel function. <laughs> you, do you remember this? Have, having, been, uh, having seen this Bessel function in some of your differential equations uh, class? Anyway, you will see. <laughs> you will see in the homework. But anyway, what I want to say is this. This Fourier coefficients can be computed after you define some function, family of function, Bessel function of the first kind of order n. Okay? And it's denoted by J sub n of this beta. And actually, beta can be uh, any real number. Uh, sorry, not, and not beta. N can be any real number in the general form. But uh, our textbook only shows what we need. Okay? So uh, actually, the Bessel function is defined as the solution of a special form of a differential equation. But in a special case of some parameter n, integer, then you may redefine or you have an alternative definition of Bessel function in this way. Ready? And we need this because here we have harmonics. Okay. That's the difference. Anyway, so here goes the uh, Bessel function of the first kinds when uh, n changes. So here, n equals 0, n equals 1, 2, 3, sorry, 4, 6. And this axis represents beta, the argument. And you will see some trend. What happens? If beta becomes bigger, what happens? This one goes down. It has a trend of kind of decreasing envelope, not the value itself, decreasing envelope. What about the higher order terms? Of course, they all have very small value or zero when beta equals small. And also when beta increases, they have a decreasing trend. But what about this, this area of beta very small? Except the zeros and first order term, all the other terms are very small. Actually, that is the reason why our Taylor series approach to analyze the narrow band angle modulation really worked well. Got it? Anyway, so uh, I will never ask you to <laughs> derive this one. I, I really hate Bessel functions. So. Uh, but what I want you to remember is this one, okay? Single tone analysis gives us what? An important lesson. When you simplify, try something simple to hand. So here the message not constant, right? After, otherwise, what it would be the simplest one, especially for the analysis in the frequency domain? A tone signal. That's why we have single tone. Now, the question, what about if we generalize this analysis for multiple or multi-tones? Right, then a lot of headache occurs. Okay? Anyway, usually <laughs> the authors of the textbook stops here and they just analyze the FM signal with a single tone uh, message signal. And 
forget about that. And here goes an example. So after carrier modulation, what will happen? Your complex envelope will be right shifted and left shifted in the frequency domain. So this shows the uh, positive frequency side only. And you, as you see, here is the tone at the carrier. And you have first order, second order. You may say first and negative first, but let me just say first order, second order, third order, fourth order, harmonic terms, right? And of course, you have the exact conjugate symmetrical part in the negative frequency component. And this is amplitude, and this is phase. So you see what, uh, what's going on here? And let me ask you, if beta is small, the zeroth order and first order dominated. What if beta increases? And you remember? This decreases quickly, right? What does that mean? Here, this carrier, unmodulated carrier, has relatively small portion of the transmitted power, right? If you increase beta, so you remember that. But it is never zero unless you choose precisely beta that crosses the x-axis, horizontal axis. And actually, this is very good. When you have a tunable circuit, unmodulated carrier gives you a lot of interesting things. So if you tune here, then you have good sound. If you tune here, then since that and that interferes, you have some strange sound. So if you go home and have your old FM receiver, uh, try to uh, dial uh, to have some off frequency from the uh, station. And you will, you will enjoy a lot. Okay. Anyway, Bessel function is gone. And now let me uh, talk about modulation index uh, for angle modulation or frequency modulation or phase modulation. And here, in phase modulation, our phase deviation or angle deviation is directly proportional to the message. And here, we multiply, so, so the idea is like this in our textbook. We assume that the norm, this, this is kind of a normalized message, mn of t. So message has peak value plus minus one, got it? So mn has plus minus one max. Now, you have some scaling factor because your original message m of t may vary from, for example, negative five to positive five. And your message is now scaled. And this modulation index is defined as what? K, this one, times A. So that what? Beta times your peak value becomes plus minus beta. Got it? Now, in FM, since we set this way to compute that Fourier coefficient, we have what? We have this term because phi after differentiated becomes like this, right? So as you know that uh, if some uh, sine two pi FMT integrated, you have one over two pi FMT uh, taken out. So here you have. So interesting thing happens here in FM, right? Suppose your signal is FM signal. 
So let me see. So your message is cosine, suppose. Okay. And since this derivative of phi equals that contains the message, phi of t equals what? Am I right? So something interesting happens. If we just said phi equals beta sine 2 pi fmt, then what? We have carrier plus minus fm plus minus 2 fm plus minus 3 fm, something like that, right? And beta only affects the strength of the Fourier coefficient. However, in the Frequency modulation, this frequency affects the value of beta. And if this goes up, beta decreases. What does that mean? Here, even though in FM your signal becomes has wider frequency because you increase the frequency like do to do, then your frequency increases. Then what happens? Even if the strength is the same, two signals have different beta. And if you increase the frequency, beta decreases. What does that mean? Harmonic terms actually diminishes relatively. That's the difference between phase modulation and frequency modulation. So this statement is very important. So your single tone message has tone frequency higher and higher. Actually, you have side bands, which are the harmonic components becomes less and lesser. So increasing the message frequency does not, does not directly increase the bandwidth. Got it? Of course, it increases the offset from the carrier. However, the harmonics actually reduces. Got it? So there is something interesting. Low frequency signal, of course you have carrier and no signal. Now you increase the uh, bandwidth. Then of course your tones actually separates more from the carrier. However, actually in when the uh, uh, your, your signal has what? When the offset is small, you may have larger harmonics, but when the offset becomes bigger, actually your harmonics decreases. So somehow the bandwidth does not increase too much, even though you change the message frequency. Got it? So we have around 30 seconds. So uh, where is Carson's room? Okay, ah, oh, too much, too much for the day. Yeah. <laughs> So you will see uh, some uh, rule of thumb called Carson's rule. Okay. By the way, rule of thumb means that uh, in Korean, 해보니까 잘 되더라. It's called Carson's rule. And Carson's rule says that uh, the bandwidth of FM signal is well approximated like this. And you see, here is the message. And here is some uh, beta, uh, which is related to the modulation index. And as we've seen already in phase modulation, if this increases, the entire thing increases. However, in FM, beta contains one over FM. 
body. So actually, this may dominate, and the product may not dominate. Got it? That's the idea. Okay, uh, that's all for the day.